In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And as always, it's great to be with you at the beginning of this day. And as is our custom, we'd like to start off by asking Mary to be with us. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. And Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. And she's also known as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Another title for Mary related to what we celebrate today is Mary is the Queen. She's the Queen of Heaven and Earth queen of angels and saints, but also Mary is the queen of the apostles, Regina Apostolorum. So let's uh, ask Mary to be with us and help us ourselves to become apostles of Christ, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we're going to invite to be with us the spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. So let's uh, ask the Holy Spirit to be with us as we get to know him better. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. He's also known as the gift of gifts. The Holy Spirit is also known as the counselor. With that, he's our consoler. In our work, a work in growing holiness, he's also known as the sanctifier. Sanctifier. And the Holy Spirit is also our interior master or teacher. Interior master or teacher. So we call out to the Holy Spirit and ask him to be with us. And pray as such. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Simon, pray for us. St. Jude, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, 
Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Yes, my friends, the family that prays together stays together. So we always begin our family conversation by praying together, praying to Mary, praying to the Holy Spirit, praying to the angels, praying to the saints. So we are indeed in very, very good company, in very good company. So to give you even more encouragement, as always, I promise to pray for you in my Mass today. Today I'll celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass at 12 noon. The evening I'll go to Paramount, Our Lady of the Rosary, to hear more general confessions. So I invite you to pray for that intention. So, I'd like to pray for you in the context of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And by far the greatest of all prayers is the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. How thankful, how grateful we should be that we are Catholics and be able to participate in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Nothing greater than that. So my first intention will be I'd like to pray for all of us that we would make a concerted effort, make a concerted effort to try to be open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. That's right, to be open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. We might even make this prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. To the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. To the heart of Mary. Then my next intention will be that all of us will strive on a daily basis to get to know our faith better. Get, de get to know our faith better. For our own personal enrichment. But also that we as priests who are called to pray and to preach the Word of God. That's part of our mission. But also that you would become, you would become the best teachers to your children. That's right, that you would become the best teachers to your children. Of course, none of us can give what we don't have. So it's incumbent upon us to work at our, our, our permanent formation. Getting to know our faith so that we can communicate or transmit our faith to others. And of course, one of the best ways in which we can grow in our faith is to share our faith with others. Grow in our faith by sharing our faith with others. How important that is. My last intention will be I'd like to pray especially for the conversion of sinners. That's right, starting with ourselves, of course, but then to pray for our loved ones that when they die, they'll die in the state of grace, but most specifically pray for those who will be dying today. 
those who die will die today would be open to God's grace. So I'd like to place all those on the altar and ask you also to unite yourself with me to pray that we open the Holy Spirit, our personal formation, and for the conversion of sinners. So start with this idea. Hans von Balthasar says that if we look up to the skies, we look up to the heavens. We're able to see in the clear night, you can see stars in the firmament of heaven, and they're shining. Some are shining more brightly than others. And those are the saints. Now the church challenges all of us to become saints. As Jesus says, be holy as your heavenly Father is holy. But every saint has his particular identity. There are martyrs, those who have shed their blood for Christ, virgins, given themselves body and soul to the service of the Lord, pastors who are called to tend their sheep. Then there are doctors of the church. The doctors of the church are known for their holiness and their great learning. Educators, those who have taught the message of the kingdom throughout the ages. And then there are the apostles. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there are the apostles. And that's what we celebrate today. Today we celebrate the feast day of not only an apostle, but two of the apostles. Today the church celebrates together Simon and Jude. As a side note that could really enrich your own Catholic faith, If you haven't already seen it, the the series called Chosen is very appropriate for what we celebrate today, because this series there are actually two different series. Was the principal actor is Jonathan Rumi, who acts as Christ. It's called Chosen because Jesus is choosing each and every one of the apostles in these uh, different episodes. Very well done. This will help you to get to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ better, but also his relationship with the apostles and how the apostles uh, are different one from the other. They're different one from the other. So let's take, let's start with the, with the uh, word apostle. If you go to the original Greek, the word apostle, the word apostle actually means he was sent. He was sent. So the last words of Jesus were in Matthew chapter 28. He's sending them, saying, go out to all nations, teaching them all that I've taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. And behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Then 
they are being sent. That's right, they're being sent. In a more wide sense of the world word, we are also called to become apostles in a more wide sense of the word. We are called to also be sent into the world to bring Christ to others and others to Christ. Now, let's move from the name apostle to the number. There were 12 tribes of Israel. And then Jesus chose 12 apostles to be his intimate friends. He would choose also the 72 disciples. Twelve apostles and seventy-two disciples. The purpose of which would be to to spread the kingdom. To spread the kingdom. Now these apostles that Christ would choose All the twelve, none of them were Jewish priests. None of them seemed to be very highly educated. None of them seemed to be very intelligent. None of them seemed to be famous or well-known. In a certain sense, they are very common, ordinary men. And we know several of them had as a profession that they were simply fishermen. Peter, James, John, and Andrew. They are fishermen who are called to be fishers of men. So I'd like to highlight off the bat, I'd like to highlight off the bat what Jesus does before he, cho he, before he chooses the apostles. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verse 12 to 16. And it says that Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. My friends, one of the primary purposes for us coming together every day is to imitate what Christ did. He went up to the mountain to pray. All of us are called to have a mountain experience which we are alone with the Lord. We're alone with the Lord and we're in prayer. So let's encourage each other to be faithful to our daily prayer experience. That we would not follow our feelings or emotions or our consolations, or our visions, but rather we would pray day in and day out with great faithfulness. We pray day in and day out with great faithfulness. As I said last night in my talk of the call of the king, One of the highlights of the saints is that they, they prayed a lot. So we are called to become saints and we're called also to 
not only to pray, but to go deeper in our prayer life. So the gospel presents Jesus going up to the mountain to pray. Now, following that verse, St. Luke points out that Jesus spent the whole night in prayer to God. He spent the whole night in prayer to God. Let's, uh, let's make a comment on that. We have to pray. And one of, the pur one of the purposes of prayer is that God would give us discernment. That's right. He'll give us discernment so that we can make right decisions in our lives. My friends, how important it is for us to make, to make right decisions. A wrong decision could end up by being disastrous or catastrophic. A wrong decision. A wrong decision could be catastrophic. A right decision can change the whole direction of our life in in a very special, blessed way. So the more, as I say, the more important the matter at hand, the more important the decision is, the more time we should spend on that. And I'll give you three examples. You're, you helping your children to decide upon where they're going to be studying after high school, their college. Very important. So we know from sad experience that making a wrong choice in that area, they could end up by losing their faith and possibly losing their soul. Another would be related to their college choice would be what is their what is going to be their profession? What are they going to be doing in the workforce the rest of their lives? So a lot of prayer should be expanded in that. But even more important my friends were talking about how Jesus went up on the mountain to pray and then he spent the whole night in prayer. It is a lot of prayer should be spent on discerning, deciding, and carrying out our vocational choice. Our vocational choice. That's right. Our vocational choice. Many of us have already made it. Many of you have already chosen the married life, and myself, I've chosen the priesthood and religious life. But your children and maybe your grandchildren have not made that yet. Many of them will be called to the married life. But I insist upon this, they really have to make sure that they choose the, their right partner. Choosing a wrong marriage mate can be, can be catastrophic, can be disastrous. For them, and if they have children, the children that God has given to them. So Jesus spends the whole night in prayer and he's pointing out by 
going up the mountain to pray, but spend the whole night because this decision that he's going to make is very, very important. These 12 apostles that he will choose will be the foundation stones in which he's going to be building his church. He'll choose them and then he'll spend three years working with them, teaching them, encouraging them, enlightening them, instructing them, correcting them. So let's take that seriously, that our prayer life is essential for us, but also the more important the matter at hand, the more extensive the time duration should be applied so as to make the right decision. Then our Lord chooses the apostles. So it says when day came, so sun is the sun is coming. He called his disciples to himself. And one of the principal aspects of calling the apostles to himself would be that they would spend time with Christ. They would spend time with him. So before the apostles would go out to preach the word of God, they first would spend time with Christ get, to get to know him, get to know his way of thinking, to love him, to want to be faithful to whatever he would ask of them. So from that, let's move into that, that is the gospel, and the gospel gives us the, the 12 apostles. And of course, even Judas Iscariot is mentioned. We cannot deny that one of the apostles, Judas Iscariot, would eventually betray Christ and take his own life. So what about uh, what about these two apostles that the church has put together to celebrate on the same day? Okay, so their their names are Simon Simon, also known as the Zealot, and Jude, not to be confused with Judas Iscariot. Jude, Jude, uh, Jude, St. Jude Thaddeus, known to be the saint of the impossible cases. The church, the Bible, does not have really too much on these two apostles. Actually, very little. But the little that we know, we can present to you and we can reflect and meditate upon it. First point I'd just like to highlight is that, like the other apostles, Simon and Jude, they left all they had to follow Jesus. We've seen in Luke chapter 5, uh, there's the miraculous catch of fish. And then Peter falls at the feet of Christ and says, Lord, leave me because I'm a sinful man. Jesus says, do not be afraid. Now you become fishers of men. And it says that they left their boats, they left everything to follow Christ. You know, Simon and Jude were not present at that 
specific moment, but what they did was they did leave everything to follow Christ. Now we might even ask ourselves this question. We're all called to follow Christ in one way or another. Are we still clinging to our nets? Are we still attached to some person, place, or thing, or a disordered way, which is preventing us from following Christ totally? What might be what might be our disordered attachment in life? So you might bring that to prayer. Is there a person, place, or thing that's serving as an obstacle in your life from following Christ? fully and unreservedly. Bring that to the Lord in prayer. You might even talk that out in spiritual direction. Okay, so Simon, Simon, you've got Simon Peter, and I have this Simon, was also known as the Zealot. To distinguish him from Simon Peter. Simon the Zealot. Now who are these zealots? Well they were a Jewish group who believed that the promise of the Messiah meant a free and independent Jewish nation where they would never have to pay taxes to the Romans again. So that was one idea of the Zealots, that the, they really felt a, a, a repugnance, a distaste, even a hatred for the Romans, because they were all under the Roman dominion. And some of them would even use force to fight against the Romans, to kill the Romans, so that one day they would be free and they would not be taxed and under their dominion. So there was basically two interpretations of the zealots. There would be those who were basically terrorists. They're armed and ready for the fight. And if you watch The Chosen, you can see Simon the Zealot having his sword, having this this idea of being a zealot enemy of the Romans so that they could be freed and the Jews could worship the Messiah without being oppressed by another political force. But another interpretation of zealot would be that they were enthusiastic that they were enthusiastic zealous for their religion in a certain sense we can take from that in our own lives that none of us want to be using violence or force to carry out God's will Jesus says blessed are the peacemakers However, all of us are called to be zealous. All of us are called to be zealous for the kingdom of God. Zealous to follow Christ the King. You might even stop and ask yourself, what are ways 
what are ways that I can zealously, enthusiastically preach and spread the kingdom of God? How can I do it? How can I zealously preach and teach the kingdom of God? How can I do it? In other words, what we're saying is the, these are apostles. You're called to the apostleship. You're called to the apostolate. And as Father John Harden of Happy Memory pointed out in one of his writings, that once we are once we are conf confirmed, once we receive the sacrament of confirmation which most of you have received. That's the call to the apostolate. Actually, the bishop, the bishop, when he is confirming the candidates, he says that they're called to defend their faith and spread their faith. I like to use a hand gesture. They're called to defend their faith they're called to spread their faith. I repeat, we're called, once we're confirmed, to defend our faith and to spread our faith. To give a reason for the faith that is within us, St. Peter says in one of his writings. To give a reason for why we have the faith within us. So that would be another, another interpretation of of zealot, being zealously bent upon spreading the kingdom, to be enthusiasts. And that's important because in our Catholic faith today, as a whole, there's just a lot of mediocrity. There's a lot of lukewarmness, a lot of Catholic deadbeats, I would say. And we're called to maybe wake these people up Last night in my talk on the call of the king, I said, hey, you're called to follow Christ the king like the apostles. The biggest religious group in our country are non-practicing Catholics. Make a decision and effort. Make a decision and effort on your part to bring one wandering Catholic, one wandering sheep, back to the church every month. It may seem to be a tall order, but everything is possible with God. So that will mean you want to try to bring 12 people back to the church every year. Why not accept the challenge? Why not accept the challenge? If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, like the apostles later on, it can be done, even more so. So, that's just one descriptive note of Simon, who belonged to the party of the Zealots. Now, his companion Jude, as I said earlier, not Judas Iscariot, but rather the Apostle Jude Thaddeus. Was supposedly like Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. He was also a fisherman. He was a fisherman who was called to be a fisher of men, as we said earlier. He is also called the brother of James, probably James the Less. So we see a certain even blood relationship between some of the apostles, Peter. Peter and Andrew were brothers. 
James and John were brothers. James, Aless, and Simon, brothers. A certain consanguinity between the apostles. So, what do we know about them? Not that much, but along with the ten other men, Simon and Jude followed Jesus, lived with him. So there we have one of the key elements of the of being an apostle is that they spent time with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now the 72 disciples, they followed Christ more at a distance. But the 12 apostles, they were very intimate friends and associates with Christ. And writings point out that they, yeah, they were not scholars. They're not highly educated. Sometimes didn't seem to be able to pick up things very easily. Our Lord would explain to the crowds his te he would be teaching, and the apostles would would say, "Explain the parable to us." In other words, they didn't pick it up. And even on one occasion, our Lord said, Be aware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And their interpretation was that they, they forgot to bring bread. So these were not brilliant men. But uh, once the Holy Spirit descended upon them, they were radically transformed. So they would walk with Christ, they would talk with Christ, they would listen to him, they would see his miracles, they were watching his exorcisms, they would see him pray, our Lord would teach them how to pray, they'd be corrected by him when they made mistakes. In other words, our Lord was painstakingly really forming these men to be his, his followers and to continue his mission once Christ would ascend into heaven. They would be the continuation of his mission once Christ ascended into heaven. And this would have to be said, and this is of great importance related to the apostles. They're at the Last Supper. They're at the Last Supper. Our Lord instituted the Eucharist and the priesthood. But also instituting the Eucharist and the priesthood. He also said this to the apostles. He said, I call you friends. Not simply servants, but I call you friends. Because the friends know, know what the Master is about. They rejoiced also, they did, okay, we have to mention this, and this is just the dead truth that they, when Jesus was arrested, they fled because of fear. You see their, their human weaknesses. The only of the 12 apostles that was present there at the 
crucifixion and death of our Lord would be St. John the Evangelist. All the others, they fled. They were, they were fearful. So in a certain sense, we, we can identify ourselves with them because we are very fragile, we're very weak in many ways. <coughs> so we can identify ourselves with these apostles. Where did their transformation come about? Okay, they were at their last supper. After they fled, Jesus would rise from the dead on the third day. Then Jesus would appear to them after he rose from the dead on various occasions. Once they're in the upper room and our Lord goes to the door and he says, Shalom, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I sent you. And he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. And he said, Whose sins you forgive, they'll be forgiven. Whose sins you hold bound, they'll be held bound. Thereby communicating to the apostles the power to forgive sins as as priests and bishops. They were actually, actually the, the apostles were the first bishops in the church. However, we have to say that the key event was after Jesus ascended in, into heaven. There's a charming, there's a charming scene in one of the movies on the life of Christ. It's a charming scene. And it's the second glorious mystery as presented by Father Patrick Payton, who was able to get the 15 mysteries of the rosary done by family theater. But our Lord is telling the apostles to go out to the whole world to preach the gospel message. In that movie, one of them pipes up and says, Lord, how are we going to convert the world? We don't really know anything. It's a charming scene. It's a charming scene. And then the Lord does not deny that. And he says, yeah, okay. our Lord says, go to the upper room. So not to go out right away. It's first come, then go. As Fulton Sheen points out. It's first come, then go. So first, come to be with Christ. Come to me and I'll make you fishers of men. And that's what they did. So Simon and, and Jude were with Peter, James, and John and the apostles in the upper room with Mary for nine days and nine nights. And they prayed, they fasted, they're in silence, and after those nine days, we know what happened. It was Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit descended upon them with a powerful wind and fire. And these men who had run away from the cross and that was also Simon and Jude, they received a special grace, the real outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They would no longer be the same persons. There's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they were transformed into zealot, zealot, uh, zealot, well, yeah, zeal, true, zealous, fervent communicators of the gospel message. Now, we don't know too much about uh, where they went afterwards, but according to tradition, according to tradition, Jude, not Judas Iscariot, but 
uh, Jude Thaddeus supposedly traveled to Mesopotamia to preach. And Simon, according to tradition, he actually went to Egypt. And also, both of them, according to tradition, they both preached in Persia, which would actually be the modern day modern day Iran. So according to tradition, they, they ended up in Persia in modern day, day Iran, and they were martyred. They were martyred there. And also according to tradition, not only were they martyred in Iran, but according to tradition that they died the same day. Now if you see a paintings of Jude will sometimes show him with a club. Which would be the instrument of his death. He'd have a club. He was clubbed to death. And then you'll, you'll see him also with a flame, like a flame over his head. This points to the Spirit coming down upon him on Pentecost. Cannot emphasize too much the importance of praying to the Holy Spirit that we will also would be enlightened and fortified by the Holy Spirit. And even when we go to our prayer, we should always invoke the Holy Spirit to help us to pray, as Paul says, we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans, so we can say, Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So, Simon, Simon is pictured with a fish. Now, this is the symbol the early Christians used to, to identify themselves secretly as Christians. The Greek initials for Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior, actually spell fish. So the Greek initials, Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior, they spell fish. Both saints... Simon and Jude have special sh shields. Jude's shield is a, is red with a sailboat that has a cross on the mist, on the mast. Simon has a red shield bearing two oars and a hatchet. So these symbols that go down in tradition give us some more details on the life of these two great saints. And also, this is important for our biblical knowledge. Traditionally, traditionally, St. Jude is identified as the apostle of the letter of Jude that we have in the New Testament. Here I'll just show you it in my Bible. Here's the introduction to the letter of Jude in my Bible. And it's actually a very, very short letter. Actually, it's just, it's just one chapter and it has only 25 verses just one chapter and just one chapter and it has uh, 25 verses 
And this is, as, as I mentioned, I think, yesterday, where you see uh, Satan coming and trying to steal the body of Moses. That's found in this letter of Jude. Satan trying to steal the body of Moses. And Michael, the archangel, comes and says, May God rebuke you. And there we have that in that prayer that we say to St. Michael the Archangel, may, may God rebuke you. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. So this Jude Thaddeus, is, he's attributed to be the author of this very short letter. Now, if you'd like to know where it is, it's, it's, right, it's right before the last book of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation or the book of the Apocalypse. So you can find it right there. So what you might do today to honor St. Jude is to read that letter those 25 verses. I think you'll find it very fascinating. He's presenting a very difficult world in which we live. Even though this was written many years ago, I think it's very applicable to what's going on today. So my friends, we've had a very good conversation today in honor of the Apostles, in honor of St. Simon and Jude. We've learned quite a bit, but let's pray that like Simon and Jude and the Apostles as seen in the Chosen, that we would have a great longing in our lives to also become Apostles, to spend time with Christ, then go out to the whole world. Remember, the teaching of Fulton Sheen. To be a good apostle, it has to be first come and then go. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.